kids out there, if you are walking around right now and you do not live in Denver and you have a Nuggets jersey, let me give you an insight. You are insecure. <laughs> let me just run that back. I'm going to rewind. <laughs> One more time. Bro, if you were walking around this morning and you got a fucking Nuggets jersey on and you're not from Denver, you're fucking losing. Because you're using someone else's success to put a Band-Aid on your insecurity. Pat Pat Pod with Roan. Subscribe to the pod. Hey, dude. I don't think... I think we need to pump the brakes with the Ant Edwards Kobe stuff. Michael. I think we need to pump the brakes with the Ant Edwards Michael stuff. Why? Because Kobe never lost in the international game. Stop, man. Come on. Come on now. Come Come on, on, bro. It's a team game. It's a team game. So we need to stop with the Austin Reeves, Larry Bird comparisons then. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Stop with those. No, no, no. I fuck with AR. I fuck with AR. But Larry Bird is definitely a different monster. Yes, I agree. <laughs> but it is. I mean, it, it just, as a USA basketball fan, it, it's a little bit sad to have them lose like that. Very I was pissed off. Yeah, that yeah. sucks. You yeah, know, it, it really does. Um, and I can say so because I played for my country. Right. Obviously, I was 19 years old, but that still counts as... I still wore the flag across my chest, and we didn't win it. We got we got silver medal, and I was and I'm still pissed about that we lost to Serbia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you that shit never gets old. So hey, I, hell yeah, I'm mad. I know they're mad. Like, is it a deterioration of the skill of USA basketball, or is it an elevation of the talents that we see in the competition in these European teams that they're playing against? I think it's a mixture of like, obviously. It's never been the skill set with the European players. That's what people always confuse, right? It's the they always been talented. They always can play the game the right way. It's it's been like the body work and the size. Usually, you get guy um, who plays, you know, uh, in Europe. You know, maybe you get one guy out of you know one, two, three guys out of I don't know two, three years. That's six. Five and above. Right. Now they're... It's, they're monsters. It's someone from every team. It's someone from... It's a seven-footer here. It's a... Luka Dantz is a six-eight guy here. You know, the... 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 Friends, uh, the... 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 Wagner, Wagner, the twins. I mean, yeah. the brothers like that. Like, so the size is catching up with, with, with the basketball now. Yes. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of talent. And I can't even just say Europe because we lost to Canada too. We have to throw the clip at the Olympics. No, don't throw the clip. It's just... Uh, so you think the same team can win gold at the Olympics? No, exactly. I just, so you I, just, to- I just think that you know it's obvious that you know we didn't have the Avengers plan, right? You know, so let's understand that we had Guardians of the Galaxy out there. No, we didn't have the Guardians. No, that's we, good still, but right. it's just not the Avengers. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't have the obviously the top dog, and that's not even fair for me to say because that's take that's discrediting the, the guys that play for their national. Co- so. The guys that the guys that played won. The better team won. But there's no one that's coming for Canada that's going to elevate their team past where they are right now. Maybe Wiggins, but uh-huh. we have a, a whole gang of that that could happen uh, from the U.S. side. So if we was to take now the future, the future of now, like the future of you know, if we was to go, you know, the faces of. You know, the younger face. But, you know, you're missing Jason Tatum. You're missing Donovan Mitchell. You're missing Jalen Brown. You're missing, you know what I'm saying? Even even some of the young guys that steal the face of the, the NBA, they didn't play. So uh, I wouldn't say B-Squad because, look, everyone who played it earned it. I didn't say B-Squad. You said g- Galaxy. I didn't Gardens say, of Galaxy. Yeah, that's still good. I didn't say B-Squad. I, I read something that said B-Squad. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay. like, but but no, I, I think they go out there, they competed, and they just came up short. Yeah, I, that happened. Somebody's got to win. Someone's got to lose. It's fucked up, though. Yeah. You were in Philly this morning, <laughs> and then you wound up up here. But, like, you guys are already practicing. What, what's good with the Sixers? I was just getting together, catching a vibe, trying to catch a rhythm. Yeah? Uh, you know, understand, you know. How are the runs? Yeah, great. Yeah, and how's the basketball? Great. Yeah? I mean, it's... 
I understand why Nick Nurse is such a great coach. Subscribe to the pod. Before you hear this spicy right. nuggets, this anecdote, subscribe hey, to the pod. So I understand, and I had a conversation with, uh, I think, my chef, my, my trainer, and my good friend, Mike Wallace. Nick Nurse, obviously, you see his work, but you don't see all of his work. You just see his basketball work, right? Mm -hmm. The way he runs practices, the way he, like our honest, the way he's on his coaches, like the way he looks at all the small details. And of course you can, you know, every coach must do that, but he, every T he crosses, every I he dots. What is it, something that he did that made you see that? Coaches running the drill. Drill doesn't look right. You know, he's in, you know, he's in the middle. He's looking back forth, you know, saying what, you know, how the flow of it is. Right. Not if the, even the guy is closing out right. He's just the flow of practice. And uh, he was, uh, he was real adamant of how he wanted his shit. Like, hey man, hey, 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 you want me to take over? You got it. You know, like, and it's everything, you know, the way we meet up in huddle, it's everyone in the organization. Like the kitchen people, the 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 people who put ice on you. To, like it's everyone in the organization, big ass circle, huge ass circle. It gets it gives you family oriented and vibes. When so and vibes like that, you want to go to work. And if you want to go to work, you're gonna perform well. Totally, I think that that's a, a massive part of it to have everybody kind of communally. I tried to do that with the Lakers. I so I got the the big circle thing when I played in Minnesota. At the end of practice, and it was my first time ever saying I've been in the league twelve years. It's my first time ever. Seen so a lot of teams do this. Uh, so handful. Chris Finch and Nick Nurse they coach together. Uh, okay, so this is my first time seeing it in Minnesota, where at the end of every practice is a big ass circle. Head coach is talking. Anyone have any announcements? Anyone think I have anything to say? You know, and it can be from the dietitianary to. Uh, the main player on the team, you know, if you're a new guy, no one's seen your face. Hey, it's, uh, what's your name? Where are you from? Like, I'm I'm amazed how nurse goes. So I, I learned this from Minnesota. I, it's my first time sitting in Minnesota. <laughs> I go back to the uh, Lakers. We in practice. I, yeah, circle up, circle up. Yeah, no, we ain't circling up, man. No, just team only. Oh, oh, shit. Okay, never mind. I guess that method doesn't work with everybody. But then I come back with nurse and then I see him doing it again. So, yeah, that shit was funny. Damn, who kick the lower people out of the circle. Because <laughs> the first day, I'm like, yo, bring everybody in. Everybody come walking in slow. Janner's coming up. Yeah, cool. Then the second day, I'm like, yo, bring everybody in. No, 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 no. <laughs> just us. Just us. Uh, damn. Okay, cool. Damn. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's a difference, though. You could tell why Nick Nurse, uh, it's a, it's a, it's more of like his, his players trust him so much that they, you know, Instead of, I don't know, 110%, you give 150%. Or instead of 90%, you give 110%. Like, it's an extra, mm, you know, just all behind, like, how much he cares. I mean, this nurse been in, say he's been on the floor since summer league. Like, you know, like. He's locked. Locked. Like, I've been around coaches and I've been, you know, my and I've been around this game so long. I've been, I like to kind of, you know, test the coaches and kind of see what the fuck going on. So I'm on some like, yeah, coach, I heard you guys got your coaches retreat. You know, where is it? You know, some guys might say Hawaii. So I'm thinking in my mind, okay, you're there five days. You probably go work too. Going to be on the beach most of the other time. So you're really not getting a lot done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that guy. Like, feel me? I'm 35 years old. I understand how this game go. You understand you what a trip to Hawaii looks like? All right, uh, uh, where's the coach retreat? Oh, we got the coach retreat in some, somewhere in California. So shit out. Y'all not going to do too much work. You know what I'm saying? Nick Nurse, where's the coach retreat? Iowa. What? <laughs> they're they're gonna have a terrible time. That's gonna be great. Let's go get so much shit done. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna <laughs> yeah. come together as a coach. Like a convention center. Right, you're gonna right. You're gonna come together as a coaching unit. You're gonna talk about all the things you wanna talk about, but the most important, you're gonna come together as a coaching unit. And the, the, like the more you can dis display like togetherness as from a coaching standpoint, it rubs off on your team. Right. So it's no accident why the the workplace is a is a like and I, I love waking up every morning going to work. Like, it's it's great. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I really enjoy the, the the work process, which makes better basketball players and everyone else better at the job. So I I can see why he's had so much success. Damn, that is fascinating. Yeah. I got to get in one of those circles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Nurse. How far man. does the circle extend? So, like, at first, it's extend, you know, whoever's around, you know. Now it's, you know, it's, I don't know, 20, 30, 30 month people you think i linger long enough we hit i get i get in a circle or you gotta put in work you put in work with philly though so yeah you know what i mean i haven't been putting in work so but i can see i can see why i can see why players enjoy playing with him i can see why he wins a lot of games because this you know he he go he's going the extra mm, and this make it forces the players to do the same Fan, fantastic I learned a lot so when yeah. I'm, i've been around this man i don't know not even a month yet and i've learned a ton like a ton Love it. Um, well, we have this interview to to get to for you guys. And just, to, I mean, it's with Gary V. Subscribe to the pod. Just as a preface, right before this interview, it was announced that Aaron Rodgers mm. is out for the season. My crazy a-, a Rod story. What is it? Right. So shout out to my guy, Sam Decker. Yeah. Sam Decker went to the University of Wisconsin. He was drafted to the uh, Houston Rockets. Right. Shout out to Sam Decker. Uh Great at Wisconsin. Great. Elite shooter. Right. I come in the gym. I'm with the Clippers. All right, Sam Decker was a part of the Houston Rocket trade with me. We all go to the Clippers. I come in late night at the Clippers school. I'm, you know, want to get some shots up. You know, whatever normal shit. I walk in that bitch. I, I I see a man, a man that looks familiar. Like man, I know this man. Come a little closer, and Rogers, right? But it's just him and Deck in there. Like it ain't so they just were in there just shooting the shit. Like Deck told me he had a good relationship with him, but you know, motherfuckers say they got a good relationship with everybody, so I'm whatever. So I see him. And Aaron Rodgers, like Deck is dunking, you know, all that. So it's really they just in there having fun, you know. Aaron Rodgers is at half court. Like shooting the basketball, but like in a football way, throwing it. He's hitting back rim. Every single time, like every time, like in and out, off the backboard, back rim, back rim, back rim, in, back rim, back, like on a line, on a line. I think, you know, some ball goes over there to him. He gets it. And I'm on the other side of the court. I, hey, Rod, <laughs> he tossed that bitch, right? Pass is awful. But I made sure I was not going to drop that fucking pass. I caught that motherfucking roll with it and everything. Shout out to A-Rod, no man. Shout out to A-Rod. Get yeah. well soon, bro. That sucks. Yeah, people are obviously bummed around. I'm talking New about York. Phoenix Sun games. A-Rod's there. Like, hug before the game. Shout like out to that. A-Rod, man. Shout out to A-Rod. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully he gets better soon. Yeah, praying for you, bro. Unfortunately, uh, he's out for the season. And Gary V, massive Jet fan, just got the news. Let's get to that interview. All right, guys, let's talk about New Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports. Anytime I want to have a nice relaxing evening, if I want to unwind, first thing I go to over at my liquor cabinet, Mm because you know I have a liquor cabinet, you know I have a bar cart, front and center New Amsterdam Vodka, because it is some of the most high quality, most elite vodka that money can buy absolutely fantastic every time you get it you're going to enjoy it whether you're making yourself a cosmopolitan feeling metropolitan if you're making yourself a martini just feeling fantastic light and about yourself maybe an espresso martini what goes better with an espresso martini than some new amsterdam vodka new amsterdam mules tis the season every season hosting guests you're going to want some new amsterdam vodka in your life because it's just that good and that's why new amsterdam vodka is the official vodka of Barstool Sports, yeah. and you guys can find your wins today. With New Amsterdam vodka. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so before before our show starts, he, uh, my co-host Ron, he he does a freestyle to for our guests. So I guess he prepares something for you. I just want you to just an introduction, a light introduction. I was a battle rap world champion two times. Not a big deal. I don't want to brag about that. Humble brag. Um, okay, a social media scene star. He's been set in a mean bar. I'm not talking virginity, but every business has taken a V card. Mm. He'll flip yard sales, companies, all with his own style. In fact, he's made more money off flips than Simone Biles. Oh, my God. The man's pockets are very deep, at least compared to me. 
the future owner of the New York Jets, Gary V. Love that. Love that. Love that. And uh, I wanted to start it off with that positivity of the intro, but I also want to acknowledge the somber tone in the room. Aaron Rodgers out for the season, man. You just have to be heartbroken, man. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Man. Honestly, first of all, thank you for schlepping over here. I know we made this turn quick and I appreciate all of you coming out like this whole morning. I haven't, this is the first I'm talking, physically talking. Um, and I, like the whole morning, I'm just like, man, these guys schlepped all the way out here to do this show. And I really don't want to fucking talk to nobody. Like if you guys weren't here today, there's a 30% chance that I wouldn't have said a word. That's a big number. Like, even though I have to go do a three hour presentation and fly to Orlando today and do a public speech and then fly back, I was going to try to figure out how to not talk. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, you know, this is fun because this has a lot of sports elements to this show. Like, when you're a diehard, I haven't missed, I've watched every single snap of a New York Jets football game since 1982. All of them, everyone. In real time, no DVR, no VHS tape. That's impressive. Yeah, it's like, you know, you know, I'm a huge Knicks fan, too. That's why I sit here to look at the garden. But, you know, 82 games, weeknights, like, you know, I had a very serious professional career. So I missed many, many Nick games. But that Sunday church-like environment of the NFL and Sunday, I grew up in retail. I grew up working every minute. But Sunday's that one day where you can sneak it in. So I've been able to pull it off. And it's a real, in my world of chaos, plenty of, like, you know, struggles and like, uh, like every human being, no matter how much level of success you have, there's unlimited things you're worried about, your family's health, like realities of life. But having that one thing that you care about that might be a little silly, you know, like. But the hope that's involved with it, like the hope that's the perpetual hope that's to involved me it's, with To me, it's less hope. It's more escapism. Mm. No matter what's going on in my world, big troubles, business, life, Sunday Jets, I, it's just wiped. Mm. No anxiety, no concern, pure nirvana, pure caring about something so much that a part of you in the back here knows it doesn't actually matter, which is actually healthy for someone who plays at the highest levels. Some people use music, some people use meditation, some people use fishing, some people use church. You know, the Jets have been that for me. And so, you know, to be sitting here on the morning after that level of excitement, I have an 11 year old little guy too. So he's all swept up in it now. Like what, you know, like sitting there watching him cry yesterday. Like it's just tough. And it's, and it's, and then, and then what happens is like my doorman's like, nah, Zach's going to do it. I'm like, yo, shut the fuck up. And I'm about Zach, by the way, I'm pretty high Zach. Honestly, I'm pretty high. You can Zach. win a Super Bowl with the backup quarterback, but it's just like having to go through the motions of like, you know, of like the, it, it's so and to win that game and to see what the rest of the team looks like and you know it's just it's just it's very challenging get well soon Aaron Rodgers get well soon yeah. the fact that I may have as many completed passes for the New York Jets as Aaron Rodgers mm. seems crazy That's the, the right. fact the fact that that man may never have a completed like I don't know what he's thinking you know you're a professional athlete my guy like you know he's I mean Achilles first snap 39 yeah. years old like the quarterback position like that's a lot to ask of a man yeah you know who was teetering to even want to play already because he's got so much incredible stuff going but he on he seems reinvested he moved his life out here he bought a house out here it seems like the team was young around him it seems like he wanted to have that tom brady last couple chapters oh by the way this is how it is for us jet fans like very unfortunate like tampa got it it worked out for them with brady oh the rams got it it worked out for them for stanford we couldn't even get a, a full drive. Forget about winning a Super Bowl. We couldn't even get a drive. A drive in a single game. The man's out for the year. This man is tortured right now. <laughs> this is and by the way, when you're a diehard fan, you know, this is going to get too nerdy for everyone in the room, but for all the Jets fans who are watching, we all know this is 1999 all over again. 1998, we had one of the best teams in the league. We lost the AFC Championship game at Denver. We were up 10 nothing with 20 minutes to go to the Super Bowl. We lost 30 to 10. Don't ask me how you're up 10 nothing with 20 minutes to go in a football game and give up 30 points after you're up 10 nothing in the AFC Championship game. But cool, heartbreaker. I was there, dead. But the next year, 99, we loaded up. Steve Atwater, Hall of Famer, Eric Green, tight end. Like, we loaded up. Like, you couldn't find anyone who wasn't predicting the Jets to win the Super Bowl. First game, first drive, New England Patriots, pre Brady. They weren't that team yet. We hand the ball off to Curtis Martin, Vinny Testaverde. They never fumbled at exchange in their career together. Fumbled. Vinny goes to pick it up. 
Tears his Achilles heel. Oh. First quarter, right? First quarter. First quarter, first drive. It gets better. Do you know who the honorary captain was for the New York Jets last night and walked down on field? No. For the first time since then? Oh, Vinny no Testaverde. No when no I way. tell you the no torture, way. you know, I watch the stories about the Red Sox and the Cubs and the Clippers, and I see it all. I know I fucking fuck with sports heavy. I know it all. You want to talk about boxing, UFC, tennis. Like, I go deep. It's my true passion. The Jets really. Uh, by the way, we're also currently, currently the longest tenured team in all professional sports of the four major sports in America that have not made the playoffs. Like, this has been a long... This is bad. Yeah, bro. I Honestly, I don't want to eat up the podcast because... You're okay. This is therapy. Come on. Get it out of your system. This is fine. But this I want to make sure we have a quality show. I know people are listening, but like, Miami even started. <laughs> <laughs> I can do four seasons on this shit, let alone an episode. So honestly, no bullshit. <laughs> I fuck with you guys. Let's segue because I, I feel like that was enough for me to get out for now. Let's do a show. People are listening. I want to bring value, and then I'll go back to my Jets life. But let, let's do a show, because in the time that we got left. So, where I'm from. Yes. If you did what you did in the streets where I'm from, yes. you would be one of the best drug dealers in the world. By the way, as somebody who was, I don't know, where's my report card? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> the, peop, the, pers, the people I was most texting to, I don't know where it is. The people I was most texting to this morning... Well, my friends from Mount Ida College, which is the college I went to. So I was a DNF student my whole life. Atrocious. So there's a small college in, uh, in Massachusetts. This is my actual pork rub. Pat, check this out. <clears throat> this is my... <laughs> is there not a lot of A's on there? No, or what? Like, there's uh, four. There's four. By the way, there's four A's. That's my four sure. year. <laughs> Look, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Physical ed one. A. Two. A. Uh, ten. A. Uh, and health and twelve. Physical ed. Uh, physical. Physical ed twelve. Yeah, yeah. twelfth grade. A. I got four. I got four A's in my high school career. True. Four. True story. True story. I got a D in driver's ed. Damn, bro. Let me give you some more highlights. I got a D in driver's ed. There was something called food survey. You'd go in, sit, and fucking make food once in a while. I got a D freshman year in food survey. Cooking for singles. That was the second year of taking a food class that's supposed to be an easy A. What is cooking for singles? What does that even mean? That they taught you how to cook just in case you never get fucking married. It's the 90s, bro. Early 90s. I got a C in that. A C. Yearbook. This is some real shit. Pap, look at the top right. Yearbook. I'm in it junior year because I knew the most about the sports team and they wanted yearbook to be good. Pat, tell them what I got hey, in yearbook. First, the yearbook has the most credits. Five credits. But tell them what I got in yearbook. D for dummy. I got D. <laughs> Do you understand how hard? Now, Pat, right here. Right here. What's my class rank? 243. Out of? Out of how many? 254. <laughs> That's bad. That's nah, bad. <laughs> That's impressive. Fact, but it's impressive, though. Since I was such a bad student, I went to a college that sent me a postcard in the mail called Mount Ida College. I walked into Newton, Mass. I w walked on campus in September of 1994. Straight hood. Straight drug dealing. I major When people are like, what do you major in? I was like, spades, CeeLo, Madden. And because my mom was Nancy Reagan Dow and I never did drugs and like... Like, she really, really fucking hypnotized me. I never sold drugs for that same reason, but I would have been the greatest of all time. Man. <laughs> I mean, what you've done. The like, what like you've just done. Just so there's no confusion. No, seriously. <laughs> what you've done, like, it's, it's very impressive. And it's and it's respected because, um, obviously, it shows you that you don't, you don't have to have everything figured out to figure it out. You know, the only thing you need to figure out, and I, this is why I fuck with you so heavy. I, there's always players that I'm like, man, if that dude was on my team mm. and it's because I knew that that's the player I would have been, which is the intangibles. Mm. I can because I've lived my life winning in the non obvious mm. in the subtle little things that, you know, trigger the human emotion like shit. That's real. Like like do saying something to a ref or an opponent, or doing something silly, or doing something to set up something later. It's why I fuck with UFC so much. I love the defense and the feints as much as the highlights, because I know what they're doing. Dude's fainting in the first round to set up something in the fifth round. 
the sweet science they call boxing. Right. It's fucking boxing. The sweet science. Why? Why? Because it's really a beautiful game of chess. Um, and MMA has taken that, in my opinion, to the next level. Um, you're absolutely right. I have actually most things not figured out. The only thing I had figured out was I figured out myself. Mm. And so I think the world is filled with people that wish they were someone instead of focusing on what they actually are. And they aspire and keep pushing themselves to an ideology that's grounded in delusion and insecurity. Instead of taking a step back and saying, everyone's great at shit. Everyone sucks at shit. Let me figure out what the fuck I fuck with. What am I good at? What do I like? God willing, if I'm good at what I like, it's a wrap. If you are good at what you like, it's a wrap. And by the way, that's a stay at home dad right? That's a corporate middle manager. I'm saying it real simple. I need everybody to hear this. If you love what you're good at, forget about, you know, fortunate for you, what you love. I, I, I'm not going to speak for you. Do you love it? Do love you love it. Ball? To death. Yeah. It to makes death. sense to me knowing a lot about you. No, I love it more, you, more than you, anything you I've ever. You couldn't yeah. have been a player in the league given your physical attribute. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had to work it. Uh, still. Of course. Prioritize it more than anything. Correct. Yeah. For you, it worked out that what you loved, that what you were good at, also came with economic realities at a time that you were born. If you were born in 1942. Oh, a very different story. So, you know, I, I think about that a lot. I think that's like a real truth bomb for the audience to sit back and like rewind this and listen to it one more time. It's like, okay, like it's pretty hard to have a great life if you don't like what you do regardless of how much paper you put in your pocket. And you know this as a professional athlete, what fans, and this took me a while to realize, I was into my late 30s before, when I started fucking with guys that were athletes, I was like, like really knowing them, I'm like, oh shit, a lot of these dudes don't love this shit. Mm, don't, don't. That's why we're stunned when the seventh pick in the draft doesn't make it. It's because dude didn't like it enough to do all the things he needed to do. Yeah. The work, got distracted. Like how didn't that work out? He wasn't about that life. And so, like, if you're at home right now and you love it, if you love it, regardless if you're great at it, you've already won. But if you're one of the 10, 20 percent of people on Earth that loves it and you're good at it, regardless of how much paper it makes you, you've won. Because we all know unlimited millionaires out there who are sad, hurt and on a road to not a fulfilled life. Well, you talked about you, you said you figured yourself out. When did that happen? I hate talking about this because it happened so early that I know that that wasn't anything but sheer luck of the DNA circumstance draw. For me, it happened at like 11. This is why I got such bad grades. I was in high school, and you gotta remember, there's a lot of youngsters that are listening to this. For everyone who's 45 and above, please email me at gary at vaynerx.com and say, I know what you're talking about. I'm not joking, because if you're 45 and up, you know that you grew up and went through all of high school without the internet. And so you knew you didn't have options. When I was growing up, there was no Gary V's that you could watch on TikTok and be like, yo, yeah, fuck college, I'm gonna do it, right? How old are you? 35. You're young. Like, like I mean it, like too young for where I'm going. I'm telling you, go find a 45-year-old, or, or if you're 30, ask your parents. There was one track when I grew up. If you don't go to a good college, you will be a loser. Mm. I would tell you 100 teachers in my life, and I only had 100, told me that I was going to be a garbage man when I grew up. Big shout out to Garbage Man. I'm really sorry about what they did to you in the 80s and 90s. That was like they the go-to. so bad. Front yeah, line it might workers. be fun. Shout out to the front line work. Not only that, it's a pretty good job, by the way. People fucking, you get paid properly and like you get most of your after, and you retire at 45. Like it's, but people separate the recycling for you. 80s and 90s, it was like the go-to. Mom, my fourth grade, fifth grade science teacher, you're going to be a garbage. And that was like, yo, you're going to be the worst person. On. They really branded it that way. But I knew in my head, okay, at 11, I was still good at sports because I have crazy hand-eye coordination. Say less. But, but by like seventh grade, I was like, oh, fuck, speed and strength and agility and athleticism. I'm like, fuck, I'm more likely to own a sports team than to play for one. And, but what, so school was killing me, like you're the worst. Sports was starting to transition to, wait a minute, like in first, second, third grade, I was killing everybody, hand-eye. Then it started, I started feeling it by fifth or sixth grade. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not going to be the best. And I'm like just real accountable and real with myself from the get out the womb. So, so I was like, yo, by then I was selling sports cards and like 
doing well, selling lemonade, doing well. It would snow, my friends are sledding, I'm ringing doorbells with a shovel. I was born in the USSR. I lived in Queens in a studio apartment the size of this with eight family members. I was already built from the dirt by the time I was 11 and 12. I already understood that my parents weren't buying me shit. Like, mm, toys? I went on two, one and a half family vacations in my childhood. Wow. In my childhood. I was a working dog. Like my parents, I was gonna work. And so I figured out like, I'm gonna be a good businessman. The word entrepreneur wasn't real yet. And so I punted school. I was like, this is fake. This isn't for me. Everyone's telling me I'm gonna be a loser. They're wrong. But when I was in high school, I was making 35,000, 40,000 a year selling sports cards on the weekends. And my teachers were making that. And they're like, you're gonna be a loser. I'm like, I make as much money as you now. And you fuckers got me in here Monday through Friday. <laughs> Wasting my time. <laughs> and my money. <laughs> and, and, and back to my mom, who's amazing, back to like, just like, I didn't really say it to them like that. I wasn't a disrespectful kid, but I had a zinger for them once in a while. You know me, Tyler. Like, if they beat me up too much junior year, I could throw in a little something like, yo, how many, what do you, what, what's your salary pro rate to an hour? Let me tell you mine. <laughs> like, you know, and so that's who I was. So very early for me, some people don't figure it out after, until 48 with therapy, 62 mm -hmm. after a life event that fucks them up. Like, we're all on our different journeys. Yeah. I stay humbled, optimistic. The Gary V life is based on the fact that I'm trying to give to the world what my parents gave to me. Like I'm, all I'm doing out here, the fuck I'm doing right this second is, back to like, let me shake off this fucking devastation, is can I say a sentence that has a 19 year old in Cincinnati listening right now saying, wait a minute, yeah man, I can't rap. I wanna be fucking J. Cole, but on some real shit after this podcast, I ain't that guy. Fuck, this is going to be tough for me looking in the mirror. <laughs> but bro, this is humongous. I, If I could wish anything on everybody listening right now besides health, anything, anything, I become God, I could do it. It's self-awareness because it is the path to joy. It is. It really is. I, really, I, I totally agree with that. And I, you said you, you found out about 11. I think I found out at about like 15, 16. But I think I was forced. You know, like you have traumas in your life that kind of force you to grow the fuck up and be a man. Yeah. You know, so you know, uh, mom, date guy, date uh, guy, street guy, street guy dies. Rest in peace is good. So I'm forced to be the man of the house. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now I have to make a decision: Am I going to go street way, or am I going to play the sport that I love to death? And, and just did, and put much, all my passions out. How much did that dude? Going back to that feeling, how much did that dude think he could get to the league? Hmm. 50, 100? 200. Really? Flat out? No, I, there, I, I've always knew. Was, a, was there a part of you at that point in your life where you had 200, but a separate part of your brain was like, but I understand the math of how hard, or was it delusional 200? Delusional 500, to a point where, where I'm talking about, I'm telling, I'm in high school not playing basketball. My grades are, I'm talking about F's, D's, I'm talking about I'm failing, I, my mom moved me somewhere, I'm failing out of school. I'm a sophomore in high school and I'm telling the security guy. Who, and how big are you at this point? I that, don't know, 130. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the security and guard. And tall, and were you? Sick, 5'10". Mm -hmm. The security guard who runs the intramural games, he's, I'm telling you, yeah, I'm gonna be all American. Hey, Patrick, are you fucking crazy? You're, you're not even on a high school team. What do you mean you're gonna be all American? Two years later, he's sitting in the stands of my games. I love it. You know, so I I understand the ground. What was the, and then I'm going to ask you this too. So think about this about you, because you have a different path. What was the, what was the, what was the moment in the basketball journey in that 14 to 18 or 14 to 19 range where it was like that next affirmation? So you're 200. I get it. Mm. I definitely get it. Mm. What was the moment where it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 800, like the game or defending someone or something. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you because I'm genuinely curious. Just walked out one day and uh, the whole school wanted to fight me and I needed security. And my mom was like, okay, this is something bigger that I didn't, like my mom didn't, my mom didn't even know. You know, I'm straight. Because you were the guy that we know you as now, even then doing the things you were doing. That's it. Yeah, like Tyler knows this. Like we, so I'm 47. I've torn both my meniscuses. I'm five, nine on a very good day. And we play ball now. Like my brother makes fun of me who's 11 years younger. He's like, he's way segue to golf and he's a better ball player than I am. He's like, the fuck are you doing out there at 47? But Tyler will tell you, cause Tyler, how old are you now? 
32. Tyler's 32. He's been playing with me for 10 years. Now we've got the next gear. The next crew's here. They're all sitting out there. They're 22, 23, 24. And Tyler will tell you, I bet you if I texted our basketball thread right now, comp me in the NBA, you're in the first three players they mentioned. Because <laughs> all I'm doing is that shit. Love that. Because, because it actually, because it works. It does. Clapping in people's faces. Because for me, like, you know, when I'm playing with all of them, I'm the least talented player on the court. But just something, cre like, I really believe in will and shit. No, like I feel like a hundred percent. I know that's all it is. I know. I, my will is Pat. How do you, man, Steph Curry? I am willing to go the furthest lengths in this fucking basketball game that any man is prepared to go. And it's every little thing ever. Ever, right? Ever. Like, like Marcus Smart. Do you know how happy I am? He's not in the Celtics mm. as a Knicks fan. Do you know sitting there watching little shit? I'm like, I would do that. I would do that too. Yeah, I'd be doing that because people don't do it. Correct, and it and it works because a lot of the men you're matching up with aren't mentally as strong. People see height. People are like, oh, he's seven foot, he's six three. People see shooting percentage, it's math. There's the math. People don't see the shit we're talking about. No. Impacting a game. And it really matters. putting a ball in the hole, impacting a game if you're fouled out, impacting a locker room, you ain't even fucking played a game And yet. everybody who's listening, back to being the CEO of a 2,000 person company, that's why I fuck with business so much. It's the closest thing to sports because it's based on merit. Either we made money this year or we didn't. Either we do the revenue or we don't. Like, you can not You can hide in politics. You can hide in the education system. You can definitely hide if you're an employee. The places on earth that I know that you can't hide are sports and being the CEO of a business. When people, when, when C, for all the CEOs and startup founders who are listening right now, when you go around blaming people that work for you, do you understand the hypocrisy coming out of your fucking mouth? You fucking hired them. You, if you're like, oh, Sally's fucking up my shit, fire her. It's full accountability. Oh. What people don't understand about impacting the game is for me, in that scenario, people that are listening right now can hear like, oh, you got the other guy off their game. They don't understand what you're doing for your own teammates. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh. A lot of the shit you're Ty, doing. Take the booze and okay, see. Okay, let's go, let's go take off the, the pressure of James Harden at that time. Let's go to take off the pressure of Jeremy Lin at that time. Yeah, they go, they go say all the names, they go boo when Patrick Bradley cool. I take all that. I'm I'm the one that can take it. You prefer it. it. Yeah, love it. I, I how hard is it, right? How easy uh, it is to sit up there and just, you know, clap. You know how hard it is to actually like boo a motherfucker? Do you understand how much I love being a Jets and Knicks fan? All these people are like making fun of me. I'm like, bro. You were a Cavs fan three years ago, and now you're a Jazz fan, and then you become a fucking nug. Right. You're a fucking Nuggets. You're a fucking loser. Oh. <laughs> Yo, kids out there, if you are walking around right now and you do not live in Denver and you have a Nuggets jersey, let me give you an insight. You are insecure. <laughs> let me just run that back. I'm gonna rewind. <laughs> One more time, bro. If you were walking around this morning and you got a fucking Nuggets jersey on. And you're not from Denver, you're fucking losing. Because you're using someone else's success to put a band-aid on your insecurity. I believe that shit to the death. Do you know that I've never worn a pair of Air Jordans? Damn. Really? And I fuck with sneakers heavy? Damn. Because I am 47 years old, and if you were 47 years old, or in that range, and you're a Knicks fan. No way. And you wear... Air Jordans, Stumped get the out. fuck out of here. I have never worn them. Fuck him. The Bulls, Scotty, Horace, BJ Armstrong, all the other people that think they did something on the back of a dude. Fuck that shit. You're That's not going to be one it. of those guys. You're not riding his coattails. Uh, it's insane to me being a diehard Knicks fan, being 50 years old. I'm, and I'm from Jordans. Chicago originally. You were allowed to be a Bulls fan. <laughs> Something told me not to wear my J's. <laughs> <laughs> Take those things. Nah. Obviously, there's a little facetiousness in the Nuggets thing and the, and the Jordans thing, but I do want people to think, if you're using other proxies of success to make you feel good, it means something else is going on. That's why I understand you. Out of all the moments in sports history, I've watched a lot. Do you know who I fuck with crazy? Novak Djokovic. You know why? That man walked in years ago to Wimbledon, center court on that grass against Federer in the finals constantly, and there wasn't a fucking person in that stadium rooting for him. And he would hit shots 
and he would, there was this one in the famous Wimbledon match they had years ago. There's this moment. I'll never forget it to the day I die. Actually, I got a Kobe story like that too. It's a, I promise you, nobody knows this Kobe story. I'm setting it up. Let me give you the Novak one. He hits some shot and the way he looks at the entire, the entire crowd it's late in the fifth set against Federer. I can't really recall. It's a little blurry. Um, even the Kobe story is a little blurry, but I'll give it to you. There's there's a moment where literally he hits a shot and he looks at all of Wimbledon and they're fucking all sad. And he just looks at them. He doesn't say a word, of course. He just says, fuck you. And I understand it to the depths of my soul. Nothing would make me happier than playing on the road as an athlete. Yeah, it's the greatest thing. Of course. That's the greatest Aaron thing. Aaron Rodgers did the same thing. He was like, I own you to the Bears. He was, he like went up to the fans. He's like, I still own you. And that's, I mean, would have been a Kobe, great guy. it's a random Sunday in the middle of the fucking season, late in the season, because it was sunny outside my window, I remember. My brother's 11 years younger than me. We have a lot of shared DNA. We obviously have some that's not. I didn't talk to him all day. Nothing. We didn't reference the game. Nothing. 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 We're, you know, he's living his family life. I'm living my family life. We're not, we didn't talk that day. This is, this is not the Knicks. And I'm kind of like Knicks. And then like deep second is NBA. Knicks. And then I'm like, okay, NBA, you know, now with fantasy and players, people are like NBA. And like, you know, I'm like, I don't even, I can't even name 30% of the NBA, even though I follow the Knicks intensely because it's Knicks and then NBA. It's like the second or third quarter. Kobe gets fouled going to the rack. It's in the background. I'm playing with one of my little ones. It's in the background. I just happen to look. Kobe misses a free throw. Just, I'm, I'm talking second quarter. He misses a free throw. The camera somehow catches something. I see something in his eye. I run to my phone and call my brother and it goes direct to like his like messages. Oh, smell, yeah. And then I go to text him. He's texting me. We're both saying the same thing and said, did you just see that? What did you see? A level of fucking insanity <laughs> that you can only understand if it's actually in you. So he was furious that he had missed that free throw? What happened? Oh, this is what's fun about Trent. I know what happened. The prior possession a dude on the Lakers got fouled and missed a free throw and Kobe was mad. Kobe came back the next time, got fouled and missed a free throw and my brother and I fucking knew that that killed him more than fucking life itself. There is nothing that could have ever hurt more. I literally believe in that moment that hurt more than losing game seven to Celtics. He was heartbroken. It was, you understand the scenario? Yeah, I, I, exactly. He fucking went on dude for missing a free throw for real. Not like, you know how, the look. No fucking like circus. He just, it was like, you can't miss that fucking free throw. Lock in. Next possession, he missed that fucking free throw. Mm. For that person, the, the only time I'm upset in life besides the Jets is when I'm upset with myself. I'm never upset with anybody else. No. Ever. 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 I'm empathetic. Ever. I'm compassionate. Understanding. I'm understanding. I might be miffed. I would even argue that there are times I'm disappointed by the complete lack of understanding the moment, given a lot of... If Tyler does something, I'm like, Ty. Right. We've been, this is a decade. If Sean does, no. No shot. Even though we've been working together for three years, haven't put in that many hours. I can understand it. It's like we haven't had that time. Ty, been my admin, like can't. I could be disappointed. I can't be disappointed in Sean. I haven't put in the hours. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Sean will tell you in this new role that he's gotten closer to me on. Sean, you've been here three, three and a half. Where are we at? Three and a half, almost, Th four. almost three, four. You're right. He will tell you in the last year. Unlike the prior three, even though, ironically, because I believe in him so much, he was on important shit. He was playing out of position, but he was doing it knowing, this is why he has so much points with me. He was playing out of position, but doing it for the team. But even in those moments, I was able to be like, hey, we need to, like, I would have moments with him. But in now that he's playing in position, in the year that he's even closer, we'd have even bigger moments of like, hey, hey, like, you know, it's like, 
that's just the way it is. Sean was my he was my quarterback in grade school when we were in sixth grade. I was, I played D tackle. He was a quarterback. He's built for it. And that's what this is what D tackles in sixth. This is what D tackles in sixth grade look like. Everybody. This is the information. I just found out all this information on the way here. Yeah, I was big body. Yo, so uh, yeah, we got about thirteen minutes. Yeah, I want to keep going. Um, um. So uh, when people look at you and they see your disposition, the way you kind of present yourself, in some ways, your outlook almost probably seems superhuman to some people. Where it's like you have this level of energy this positive outlook, this extreme accountability. Do you ever find it in yourself that you need to humanize yourself? That's a great fucking question. I spend a lot of time thinking about, I struggle to not speak my mind. And what that means is I don't want to fake it to, to balance that question. I struggle with this. I'm like, fuck, man. There are very few people on earth that walk around saying, I do not give a fucking shit about anything. The paper, the fame. I don't care about anything besides the health of my family. The amount of people I know, and I know a lot of people, the amount of reading I do to watch the world. I am in some fucking outer. And then, by the way, I know I'm there by the luck of the draw. DNA, being grow up in the dirt best mom of all time who made me think I could fly, but still fucking would smack me in the face if I went out of line. So I wasn't fucking delusional or entitled. Like she fucking. Parenting is very important. Bro, my mom need, my mom is walking in moonwalking to the first ballot hall of fame of parenting, moonwalking statues at every stadium she ever touched. So I know that most people haven't had that luxury. My mom lost her mother at five in the Soviet Union, my dad lost his dad at 15. My grandma, my dad's mom, who I knew real well, was incredibly, she's like bizarro reverse Gary V. Everything's fucked up. It's a, everyone's fault but hers. She struggled. I knew her mom, my great grandma. We came over immigrant family deep. She was also extremely negative. Like, so I, so what I struggle with is I'm a, I don't think that, I, I think I'm, my content is good for people at certain times, but I'm all one flavor because it's my truth. And I don't know how to do a lot of different things. There's a, I also have some problems. For example, I was trained as the oldest son of an immigrant family that it's all on me. Mm. I don't know how to share my fucking vulnerabilities. Like I had a fucking hold. My mom trained me like, if shit goes down, you're in charge. You take care of your sister. You take care of your brother. I st- I was the I was fourteen. Fuck. By the time I was fourteen, when I started working my dad's liquor store, by the time I was seventeen, I was the guy. I was the guy. Like it was clear to him and I. It took him forty years to realize it, but he knew I was coming. And like, and that was good. But it fucked with his manhood a little bit. So I'm empathetic to that. But like by the time I was 22, I was running the business, like the whole family. Like, so A, what you see is a reflection of my truth. I'm not vulnerable to Tyler. I'm not vulnerable to anyone. Mm. That's not a strength. That's a weakness, but it's my truth. And that shows up in my content. And then I'm just am optimistic. And I am on offense. So it, you know, and so why didn't notice I was like, that's a good fucking question. There have been times where I'm like, all right, let me show them. But I'm like, I don't have anything to show them. I'm also incredibly private. I'm not sharing my personal life. Right. People out here like sharing every part of their personal life. You give the world your personal life, your personal life is the world's. When my celebrity friends are like, yo, this is fucked up. I'm like, stop taking photos of your children. You don't give your children. They don't have your children. You don't tell them about your boyfriend. They don't have your boyfriend. Like, so I'm very conscious and subconscious about these things, but I'm also very proud that my shit is real. Meaning all the people that work close to me, 90, I'm, you probably asked Sean this. Like, like I'm, I, I find it unlikely that you haven't asked Sean somewhere along the line of like, what's Gary really like? Of course. That's how, yeah, that, that's, that's just that's normal. How it is, yeah. That's just normal. That's what we do. And all of them walk around and be like, it is what it is. Yeah, same dude. It is. What people don't know is that I work 15 hours a day being the CEO of a 2,000 person company. They think I'm Gary V. Mm-hmm. What Sean could have told you is like, dude works every minute. Knows everything I'm. No, every second. Dude knows everything I'm doing, wow. let alone what he's doing. Me, Sean. You know, and I don't know where your combo went, but I know like that, like, I, I think people, uh, I was garage selling Saturday. So one thing I, along the way in my career, you're still garage yeah. sailing. You're still bro, just in the field Saturday, like that. This Jesus Saturday, Christ, dude. this Saturday, 
Last Saturday, a couple days ago, I went garage selling. Um, I do that because I do a sh- I, I do I've done like ten episodes of this show called Trash Talk because where I was coming up the game and I was talking about investing in Facebook and Twitter and I invested twenty five thousand in Twitter and changed my life and dudes were DMing me like yo fuck you. What do you mean 25000 I got $18 in my Wells Fargo. What are you talking about 25000 to Twitter? And I was like, they're right. Like, cool, I'll make 25 k content for Pat and all the dudes I talk about in the league because that's shit they can do. And by the way, they earned it. Let's just remind everybody blah, that. Blah, blah, blah. But, hey, I used to have 20 bucks. I know how I got here. Besides, my dad paid me nothing. Let it be, Sash, I'm sorry, but dude paid me two bucks an hour for like four years. I, I, I took his business from three to 75 million and was getting paid 40, 50,000 a year. Damn. Now, my pops is good people. All the immigrant families know where I'm about to go. He wasn't trying to fuck me. He thought he was just saying like, you get the business when I die. This is family business. Right. I was like, that just sounded like Kanye. This family business. Like, he was like, you get this when I die. I go, Dad, bad news. You're 22 years older than me and crazy genetics. You're dying at 95. I don't want to inherit this shit at 73. It's a wrap. I need to go do my own thing. So I had to do things on the side to like if I wanted any kind of more money. Plus, I enjoy it. So I would garage sale and for 30 bucks, 80 bucks on a Saturday, I'd make a thousand flipping on eBay. So I was like, let me start showing people instead of saying it. Anyway. This Saturday, I'm in Springfield, New Jersey, garage sailing. This dude from Newark came up. He's like, Gary, are you really out here like that? I'm like, yeah, bro. What do you think? This is AI videos? I'm out here. What do you think? I'm staging those videos? Yeah, I'm out here. He's like, man, I can't believe that shit. He's like, respect. And then Nima, who was filming me, he's like, how often does that happen? Because obviously, D-Rock, who's filmed me for nine years has just left and starting his next chapter. Big shout out to D-Rock, cheering for him heavy. So Nima's filming, not D-Rock. I want to give Dustin a break. We've been traveling a lot in August. Plus I wanted to chop up with Nima. He's like, that happened a lot? I'm like, yeah. Like, but like for me, this Saturday, that's normal. You know, like to me, I, I prefer the dirt. I prefer the road. You want to get it out the mud. That's where you're f- familiar. I prefer it. That's where I'm comfortable. You show me 30,000 people mad at me. Because I'm doing something to them. Oh, great guy. Best feeling ever. Great yeah, guy. that's incredible. So as uh, we're, we're going to wrap up in a second, but as you kind Let's of... Let's go another 10. All right. Because uh, I know we haven't gotten to a whole lot. Oh, I don't I, mind. I'm I'm sure, I'm, we're I'm sure, sponges. We're, we're just here it, to listen. I'm sure there's some shit you thought about. Like, let's reset. I'm sure there's some shit you thought about that you might wanted to get out. I want to make sure I hit it. Totally. Uh, I mean, Pat... Um, I, I want to go speak about the will part. I, I want to... I wanna, I, I think it's important that people understand that aspect of it. You can have all the answers, right? You can have the the road. You can have the the the, the perfect household. You can have, you know, and every day you smell pancakes and the sun is out. But if you if you don't apply pressure, and when I mean pressure, if you don't apply yourself to whatever whatever it is that you want in life, I think you're not gonna get it. It's too hard because too many people are trying to get it. Yeah. Right, you're competing. This is one of the scariest things for me in the world. Over the last 20, 30 years, parents started to demonize competing. You show me a six-year-old who cries after a game, I'll show you someone who I wanna fuck with. But what do most parents do now? They're like, oh, you can't cry about this, it doesn't matter that much. Or it's over and we have champions and everyone lines up and we're giving the seventh place team a big ass trophy. You came in seventh out of eight. Don't confuse these children. Don't let them go home and think they did something. We're actually telling them you won when you lost. We've demonized losing. So I look, I think I think you know the will for me is God, there's so much to it. You know this. I think first uh, I'm I'm going to we're going to bounce here because I think we can help. There is a level of really being capable of accepting other people's opinions and not being bothered by it. You know, there's something very deeply route, routed, it rooted in having will that's grounded in um, not caring about other people's opinions because you can't have the will because there's spectators in everything. Obviously, at the highest levels, like what Pat does, there's uh, that is like the core thing. But for all of us, most people aren't willing things because they're not willing to deal with the judgment of the people around them in the process of their willing. 
that's a like just watching all the people behind the camera now shake their head. There's something very su- like that was subtle, which is why I'm going to say it again. When you're willing, there's collateral damage. There's getting home at one in the morning. Oh, dad can't come to this school meeting or, oh man, mom, I love you. I can't, or wifey, I can't be there. Yeah, man, I got I got to focus on some shit that's way important. Or you're the, or you're the person in the family that's asking the, the, your spouse to go to therapy and you're in an immigrant family and you've demonized therapy, right? To your point, that one's real. Mommy and daddy missed something. Let me go a left field one. You have decided that you want to save a relationship, parent, marriage, and you're pushing for therapy, but you're in a first generation ecosystem. Both of your families are immigrants. Both of you were born in Mexico and Peru, and you're in America now, and you're the one who fucking got educated and like, let's go to therapy. And everyone, your aunties, the grandmother, your sister, like that's willing. You're trying to will your relationship to get over a hump, but the culture of your family is like, that's bad. You know how many people right now in the world out of 8 billion demonize therapy? 5 billion, 7 billion? It's an old school thing. They got stigma on that shit, right? Willing, uh, trying to stop. You know how many people right now are part of a friend group of seven and somebody is in the depths of alcoholism and nobody's stepping up to stop it? Mm. And you're gonna try to will it, but you're gonna get, first of all, the kid, the person you're trying to help, it doesn't wanna hear it. And you know the other five are like, yo, he can figure it out, or she could, like, it's gonna it's be just okay. uncomfortable. It's gonna be there's like a discomfort in the. That's it. Now we're going there. Yeah, you, don't you see where I'm going? Have... Like, yeah, the, like, there's, there's different levels, different versions. Um, yeah, I mean, just, man, you grew up with a learning disability, and they told you you sucked, and you gotta fight your whole life to get to your self esteem. Like, there's a million versions of that. Uh, I heard of something like the perfect amount of trauma mm. as a child. It's called adversity. Yeah, it's it's great for you. Oh, it's, it's called totally. adversity. Yeah. You know, totally. words have gotten crazy. Like trauma is like, woo. but then it's like, I I actually think the perfect level of trauma's definition is being comfortable with adversity. By the way, do you know what the perfect level of trauma is? Losing the championship game in third grade, mm. like I did. We lost three one. Fuck the Cougars. <laughs> Fuck we lost John Longo from Edison, New Jersey in the 80s, and your dad was the coach. He was a big Italian dude. I still am mad at you. 3-1 yeah. Cougars. I was a starting pitcher. I didn't give up any runs. First three innings, but you can only pitch three innings. Well, okay. We lost 3-1. Solid game. We lost right. 3-1. Solid. I am 47 years old. It's 1985. It's 12. It's 35 years ago. I'm bringing it up right now. Perfect level of trauma. It's called adversity. It's why I fuck with losing. So I, let's get the fucking trophies out. You know who gets a trophy? The winners. So the losers get, you lost. And the lesson that comes with that probably. The perfect amount of trauma. Perfect. Right? That's a perfect, that's why I love sports. Any great athlete, any great comedian, like you're not going to be a funny comedian unless you went through some shit. Like you're not going to have the perspective. Not a fucking person we put on a pedestal in comedy that hasn't had 50 nights that suck shit. So I see basketball players like that. I use that against them. Like, man, this, you ain't been through shit. Fuck it. Great game for me, Pat. Oh, man, this motherfucker been having a, uh, his career has been handed to him and he's in a silver platter. All right, cool. I'm going to eat him in the playoffs. Cause it's it's a it's a it's it's a level that I'm willing to go that he can't go. This is where fans are confused. You know why? Dude had perfect genetics, had a Clarence's family had a very good like you know like perfect right had a perfect situation. And by the way, God willing, by the way, we're just talking we're just talking about sports right now. Uh, AAU'd all the way out, perfect clothes, perfect situation. And I'd never play AAU. You know. <laughs> Yeah. One year, one year in a perfect program in college with four other dudes who could ball the fuck out. Got kicked out of college. <laughs> and take an eighth. And like that dude is in trouble. Forty seconds. Unless, unless he's got chemicals in his head that are crazy. Oh. Yeah, it's not. So really, it, it takes that level of it. Um, so my last thing for you is is this. Um, when we look at you and your body of work, I think one way to describe you is definitely a futurist. You look at markets that you think will be emerging and you put your time and your energy into that. Yep. So, so as you look at the next kind of five to 10 years of your life, where where do you think you'll be spending your energy that you haven't been spending energy not, in the last? I'm not a futurist. You know who I am sticking to sports? 
there's nobody in entrepreneur land who watches more film than me. Mm. Mm. Nobody. It's the same shit. I it's promise. the same shit. That's it's why the I, same shit. I wanted to put it together. It's the same shit. You know shit. what I do? You know why people like this man succeed? Because you know on Thursday you're playing dude and you're going to sit while you're fucking ice bathing or listening. to it. I don't know how you fucking do it. You're going to watch. And by the way, I promise you, if I watched fucking four hours of Tyler playing basketball, I would guard him even better than I already do because I would be like, oh, this is what he does. Right now, I don't know that. Like, probably subconsciously, I know it because we ball up and pair up against each other a bunch, but I don't really know it. But if I watched four hours of film, all I'm... So you're a historian then. Um, I am the fastest mover on truth in the game. I don't predict. I definitely don't guess. If I see fucking 20 million 14-year-old girls fucking with TikTok when it's called Musical.ly, that's a fuckload of people already fucking with it. And I can play the chess moves of, you know, 28-year-old cool dudes aren't going to fuck with it now because it's all 14-year-old teenage girls and are going to think it's corny. But if I'm right, based on my pattern recognition, because I've been in the league for a while, this is how it's going to play out. And then I'm the guy on the internet saying TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. By the way, NFTs. One that I can't wait for it to play out. Here's my track record on NFTs. I believe in NFTs. I believe 99% will go to zero. That's my film. That's what's on tape. That's exactly what's going to happen. Right now, everyone's like, oh, NFTs were a fad. They thought the internet was a fad in 2000 when all the stock prices collapsed. People don't understand. It's like, uh, I bet you there's dudes in the league right now, based on how you see it, that have been written off of like, they're not going to be good, that you still, that you know are going to be good. Yeah. Because maybe they got dinged up, maybe they're not right, but you see enough things where you're like, uh-uh, dude's 19. Like, right? Like, you know, they're, you're like, yeah, but like, oh, they wrote him off? Nah. Like, like Joker, he just needs to lose weight. Yeah. He may or may not. Or, no, nah, no, nah, he, I, Pat may know, no, no, dude's been in the gym all summer working on his left. And that's what we all saw on film last year. He's coming. Even though we as fans are like, and that's what I do. Like, for me, that's what NFTs are right now. Like, oh, we all just got overhyped and got crazy and got greedy and fucked up the narrative, but the truth of the technology, the blockchain, smart contracts, nobody can fuck with, the people don't understand the technology. You can't go and talk to people that talk about NFTs like casually and ask them what the technology is. They don't understand the difference between a blockchain and a centralized server. They don't know what a smart contract is. Like people just talk, it's like all the talking heads in sports. You know all the people, yeah. they're either doing it for entertainment value or they're grounded in guys knowledge. Guys who never played the and sport a, before. Right, yeah. and by the way, you know this, the guys that never played the sport before would then make an argument that if you never played basketball, you could never be, like really, then you can't be a great head coach. And we've seen the examples of people that have been able to do it. To, to both of our points, 85% of the people are doing it for ratings, but I'm sure if I asked you, talk to me about some of the talking heads in sports media that do know the game, you can rattle them off because you listen. Same for me. Every entrepreneur, every business CEO, I can tell if I have enough hours of watching if they've got it or they don't have it. So the reason I'm predicting is because I'm watching film every day. I'm taking a flight to Orlando for a speech and coming back tonight. On the flight, I will consume the world for two hours. I will read everything. I will know the pulse of, pulse of what people think about from sexy red to what they think about the new drop of this to what they think about the, why are corduroy hats back in? I could have told you that shit 12 months ago. It's sexy red, dude. She's bringing them back. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Totally, do you know what totally. I mean, though? Like, well, like, like all this stuff, fashion No, I don't think food. people do, though. That's the thing. I don't think people could sit here and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I understand. But people really don't. No. Like, they really don't. Like, me having you on this pod, mind you, I didn't know a lick of who Gary V was. Mm -hmm. I, everyone that's important around me that had a little bit of brain, send me everything you know about Gary Vee. My daughter, yesterday, send me everything you know about Gary Vee. You're on Instagram a lot. Tell me a bunch of, tell me a bunch of shit about him, right? It's just that that ability to, 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 to get this and make it this fucking table. How can I do that? How can I make that coffee drinkable for everybody in this bitch? All right? Like, let me, how can I twerk this and make it that? You know, I think it's the the willingness to, 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 to be able to use your brain at a high level to think outside the box, but also be able to understand and, and, and be at a level where people understand you. I think it's, I think, man, what you've done has been incredible, bro. And I think that uh, it, it, it's, it's hitting home for me so much because it's, 
it's almost like a like my life story, the way see it. the motivation you I know, to speak. I, the, I know more about you than you know about me. So yeah. this is when I say my crew, what well, how would they comp me? Because I know. Because I've had I've had the luxury of the serendipity, and obviously you're a very public figure in an arena that I enjoy, and like, and I see it. Everything. All the fucking things from the subtle little defensive play to the most outlandish with a camera. I'm like, yep, and that I would do that too, and this and that. Because don't forget, we're in a fucking entertainment business. Of course, don't fucking forget it. Don't we? Don't do not forget. And I'll, I'll end it. with that. Back to entertainment business. The thing that is the glue. Uh, back to another professional athlete thing. The thing that changed my life physically was soft tissue work. For everybody out there, Google fascia and soft tissue work. If you got fucked up back or whatever like so that's some shit that most people don't know about fascia so i think about fascia a lot like how it works in the body and for me what he just said at the end entertainment the fascia of my life as an entrepreneur as a human as a public figure is that i love people the fucking thing that makes it all work that ties it all together there's a lot of people that are good at business there's a lot of people that can, you know, shoot the shit and have communication skills like I do. I struggle to find people that do what I do for a living who genuinely, deeply, mm. actually Here. love fucking people. And here's what I've learned about myself. It's because I'm not scared of people. Most people don't love people enough because they're scared of them hurting them. Insecurities. That's right. The reason I love people so much is because none of you can hurt me. I love you all, for real. Like, it's crazy how much I, like, love you guys already. Like, just having one rep. Even the dudes, like, oh, like honestly, just, like, look at, like, it's crazy how default it's love because I'm not scared of you. You can't do anything to me. And it comes in multiple places. Obviously, there's the emotional. But I promise you, Queens, Edison, New Jersey, and definitely Mount Ida College, like, when you're also around the perfect amount of trauma... I'm also not scared physically. You want to talk about will? My rationally know that most people can beat me up, but I actually think I can win every fight. No, no, no. Hey, no, no, no. Mike Tyson walking this bitch. Uh, you better put your money on me because I'm going at the Mike ass. Yeah, I just feel it. It's crazy. We got into this thing in senior year of high school, a uh, college called Tap Out. UFC was just coming on early, early. Like, not what you guys know now. Like, the crazy shit that you see the old videos on YouTube. So me and my college friends, and grant you, all my college friends were hood kids. Like, much bigger, much stronger. Like, fucking kids. Let's just put it that way. And the game was called Tap Out, which meant we lived life, senior year of college, and at any moment, for any reason, somebody could try to make you tap out. <laughs> Let me explain what that actually means. All of us lived in fear for like three months playing this game. Cause there was, I mean, I would go to the bathroom in my like fucking apartment and think like a friend was hiding behind a door trying to put me in like a, a fucking chokehold. So all these guys are bigger, stronger, more rugged than me. Because of that, and I, I can't wait for them to all watch this. There's a thing that they all know about me, which is my finger move. So somehow I figured out in this thing, where, <laughs> look at what, He's red. <laughs> <laughs> it's so subconscious in me at the tailgate. Yeah. I did something. Yeah, don't you go to see somebody. You're like, you're not fucking going there. You're gonna break my finger. <laughs> because they would lock me down and try to do some crazy shit. The only thing that I had enough strength one was my hand was stronger than their individual finger. My hand at that point in my life was stronger than any of my friends' individual fingers. So when they would, when I would walk into the fucking room, we played fucking Sega Genesis, and my friend would jump out from behind the couch and try to literally choke me out, when he was going for it, I learned over time to like grab a finger and do shit, right? Especially this one. Like Especially this, that one, the small one. Yeah, like there you, it goes. You do a lot yep, of stuff yep, with that, there right? There it goes. You know? So like, like, back to Mike Tyson, my brain would go into, I think I can get his pinky and break it. Oh. It's something. And, and oh. most people I fuck with won't let you break their pinky, but some people will. And that's what I'm interested in. Damn, well, you're a busy man, but you definitely got busy today. Thank you so much for your time here. Gary, Gary, v. Gary v on the pod. Such a pleasure. Good luck with everything, too. I appreciate you. I'll do a quick photo. I don't really believe it.
Yeah, you know what it is. Like yeah. there is luck because yeah. shit we don't control. Yeah. But we fucking create. Yeah, gotta create. Got it. Thank you, brother. Right Thank you. Can we get a quick subscribe. One, two, three. Subscribe. Yo, it's Gary V. Subscribe to this fucking shit. Love, love that, love that, love that. Love that. Thank, you. Thank you. Let's talk about straight talk. Not, not curly talk. No, 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 no. Straight talk. Not, not, not sideways talk. No, 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 no. Straight okay, talk. We're talking is. about straight talk because hey, let's have some straight talk between us, me, you, and the camera. He quit. You're, you're, <laughs> that's straight talk that's for it. sure. Yeah, he and he was probably paying too much for his wireless yeah, plan. He quit. But <laughs> straight talk, I mean, it, 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 you're getting the straight talk from Pat Bev uh, himself. <laughs> straight talk just introduced their new straight talk minute line plan with more lines. And all those more lines mean more savings. That's $25 a line per month when you get up to four lines with unlimited data. Oh, you get four lines, not even up to. And you can talk and text all over the place. It's $25 each line. That's right? incredible. It's $100 for four lines. That's that. a good deal. You could talk and text all over the place on nationwide 5G, plus no contracts, no hidden fees, and no compromises. That's the Straight Talk talking from Straight Talk Wireless, and it's available today at Walmart, and it's available at walmart.com. Straight oh, yeah. Talk. Not up. Straight. Straight. They said there's no more trains leaving New York, Mike. Look what Mike I said. Hank said that. <laughs> Oh, he lies? <laughs> he lies. <laughs> He's, I mean, he, he, me. he lives in his own world. He'll be like, the Mets are going to go 0 and 162 this year. They're not actually going to go 0 and 162. There's no more trains going out of New There's not actually no more trains going out of New York. There's one line. He didn't say it's no more. He said there's one track going out. One track going out for all day. He's now, now I'm thinking, like, how the fuck am I about to get back? Like, he, oh, no, uh, it's right in the tank. He's talking in exclusively hyperbole. We have Pat Bev in the, in the Barstool offices, and he's just interacting with everybody. He had a nice little talk with Frank the Tank, but you might have got poisoned by some misinformation. Poison is the correct word. Oh, my God. This office is... I came here with the donuts about a week ago, right? I came here with the donuts, and um, Dave wasn't here. Oh, what was the difference in the office? Oh, man, I just told Dave. I'm like, man, I came here a week ago. You were hanging from the chandeliers. I hanging from the chandeliers, but it was more life. It was more like people were, you feel me? Like When Dave's here, people are like, oh, man, when he here, motherfuckers, his tails are tucked, <laughs> heads are down. Like, <laughs> he is, Working. like, for real, like, he a dragon or something, but burn some shit down. Like, for real, motherfuckers are, yeah, it's, it's very people are, people are scared of him. Not like Gary V said when yeah. he was like, don't that, ever. Does that create a good workforce? I, I don't I don't think fear does. Um, I don't know. It's different strokes for different folks. I think that that got people churning to a certain level where yeah. it's just like people have to do, it's like, like get if, your shit done. But if you need to turn people up to that level, then you don't need to have those type of people. I agree. I, I've said, never, I don't want to have a business where I have to motivate my workers who work for me. Like, no, I'm going to have a, a team full of all killers. Like our pot is a team full of killers. I agree with that. I I'm I don't feel like um uh you know like I don't act different when Dave's here when Dave's oh, not here. Know. Tommy Smokes does. Talk about it, dude. Because yeah, I give Tommy Smokes weak. this advice all the time. Nah, that was weak. That was weak. That was weak. Because he just gave me. He literally took over the pod, our pod upstairs. Yeah, for something that we were shooting with him. Yeah, and he came down here, and he was, and I was. And I wanted to look because I wanted to see KFC. I wanted to see how he he spoke. Barstool Radio was yeah. going on. So Barstool, you were right yeah. there like a sponge. Yeah. So I just wanted to see like how, how, how did they speak? How did like, you know, them getting into character? Was it character? Was it, you know, the factual play? You know, they used that. So I wanted to get And it. what was your assessment? Do you think it was character? Does it change on camera to off camera? It doesn't change. If it changes, maybe a bit. Not a, Amplification. Yeah, yeah. You know, but like Tommy Smokes, he... He, they turned him down. Everybody no, else no, turned No, no, they up. didn't turn him down. He turned himself down. He turned himself off. He turned himself off. <sighs> yeah. His legs wasn't crossed anymore. His excuse was going to be it wasn't any space. But no, if you're a fucking stud, people make space for you. Like they did with Dave sat down. Right, you know? exactly. You know? And I tell him this all the time. I was like, dude, they didn't bring you on that show to not be funny. You're a funny guy. Like interject and don't and be scared. The, the, I He's think regressing he, when he goes on that. Yeah, he, no, I wouldn't. I didn't like that smoke. For real, for real. I don't like. I'm that. glad you said it out loud because I say this stuff to him privately. And yeah. the other day, I was like, dude, I'm not trying to get on you about this. I just know you can do well. No way more. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. I agree. And then the question he asked was like, 
Well, he's his relationship with Dave is weird. He's like Dave's ball washer, or like tech, or like historically was. Then Dave wasn't in the office a lot. Tommy kind of flourished, but whenever Dave comes back around, he reverts back to that he role. Change that. But that was even before Dave was on the show. He yeah. wasn't saying anything. Yeah, yeah. So like, he te Pat texted me. He's I like, texted him mid show. Said anything. Like, Tommy Smokes ain't saying a word. What's wrong with him? Why? Are you Everybody else is talking. Fights is talking. Pat's talking. KFC's talking. Dave's. I'm talking. talking and they about to go on live. They have to tell yeah. me to stop talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I was playing scared. Subscribe to the pod, dude. We just don't. We just didn't like Tommy playing scared like that. Uh, I also took you to a coffee spot down the block. Oh my god! Uh, we Awful. walked past eight coffee spots to get to this. Awful. Spot. I think it's the best one. Variety. I think it's the best one in the neighborhood. I think it's the best one around. Any sponsors? Here. No. Awful. <laughs> Awful. Explain why. You had a coffee. Yeah, I got a cold brew. No room. A second. Huh? Your second coffee of the day? Your first? No, no, first one. Oh, that was Mike. Mike got a coffee this morning. I got a tea. look alike, huh? Yeah. Easy. I got a tea. I got a peppermint tea. Right. I'm going to just ask you, when I got my cup, what was in my cup? A tea, a tea bag and uh, no string out the side. It was just like an amorphous tea bag. With little... Flakes of peppermint. Oh yeah, from the tea bag. It was bleeding through the tea bag, floating in my water. <laughs> yeah, like literally, like uh, it was like like fish food, <laughs> like floating in my shit. Yeah, I take. We walk out the store. I take eight steps. I choke. You hear me choke? He had to stop walking. He like, almost like, we had to, almost had to give him a cardiac uh, revival in the seven street. Seven steps outside. The there place. was a homeless guy with a mullet who was super worried about him. There was a guy who came up ready you to go. pat him on the back. Pat, are you okay? I'm I, I'm okay. I'm, yeah, I, yeah. That shit floating in my fucking tongue. That's what I'm <laughs> fucking swallowing. Right Immediately now. threw it out. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't like that tea. You you brought in pizzas to the office today. That was very nice of you. Yeah. What's um. Raz, Daz, Vaz? Gaz. Gaz. <laughs> Gaz. I think he I think he sent a little Vaz, yeah, Vaz. I, that's Dave's guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Dave's got Vaz. Yeah. He <laughs> said something like that's some great that I like you came in today, that was great content. It was. But that's great not, interaction, but he that's said. That's not why I'm coming in. I want people to understand that. You're coming in to work. Yeah, I'm coming in solely to work. That's it. Now I'm not here. And who doesn't like to show up work with gifts? I completely agree. Like if we go to a play a game in Memphis, yeah, I'm ordering them chicken wings. Mm. Yeah, them honey goldens. I'm ordering those. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Say less. Like we we in we in Philly. I'm trying to I'm trying to get some Angela. I'm trying to get some some cheese steaks. I'm trying to make sure you feel me. Like so. I would go double cheese on this cheese steaks over there. Just double cheese, real nice. So. Everybody loves the the gifts. Subscribe to the pod. What size shoe do you wear, bro? I'm gonna no. get you something. First off. Wait, what size are you? I'm 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 13 game shoe, but I'm 12 and a half regular. 13 game shoe, about eight pairs of socks. Uh this one. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get you some uh no, you need to get some, some shoes. 12s. You need to get shoes. And Why? I, I'm getting you Air Force Ones. These are timeless. Th yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you keep throwing them on. <laughs> but he, well, bro, these are Paul Newman wore these. I, I, well, you stop bringing that up. <laughs> you have these to, are timeless shoes. I know. Plain white van. Yeah, no, uh, -uh. that ain't plain white. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? That's stain white. <laughs> <laughs> right. That ain't white, brother. All right, well, you got to cook them up a little bit. I'll probably, I'll probably buy a fresh new pair of the same exact ones. Just, Sixty dollars. You're, You're gonna be rich forever. But you 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 a big you a big tipper anyway. So what do you exactly think? right? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm sa I'm saving the the shoe money. Meanwhile, you got you got a deal. I'm gonna get you some. I'm gonna get you a pair of these thirteens. You're gonna hey, look shout fantastic. out to the bar stool Philly, yo. You went to the bar. Oh man, I, how was it? I wanted to have me a little beer last night. And what'd uh, you get? A pumpkin beer? No. Nah, gotta I get got the a, pumpkin. The pumpkin drublick. I got high noon. They have this machine. I don't even know what it's called. Mike, Mike Wallace, help me. It's like when you're at. No, it's the board. 
It's like at a train station. Oh my right God. I love that, bro. You have no idea. I sat in front of it for one hour. Like this. For one hour, like this. You know that they'll like put your name no, on no, there for like no. Put it up there. Yeah. Subscribe. Pat Bev and Raw. Pa, what do you mean? They did? Oh, it was great. <laughs> and it. Yeah, it was great. Let's go. And I heard it. And and we walked in. I'm, I'm what the fuck is that? No, and I'm looking. I'm Someone looking. counting money? And sure enough. I go and look at it. Mike look at me. He's like, bro, what the fuck? And I'm looking at it like, bro, it's the best thing in the world. Uh, that is it's one of the better bars in the city. Positive vibes only. And uh, and it's one of the better bar stool bars as yeah. well. Like people Shout go out to there. The gang. Were people in there or what? It was closing up. Shout out to the cats. Shout out to... uh. Miss Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to uh Mr. Um Mr. Lenny behind the bar. What was security saying? Were they oh, we pulled up. We pulled up tank. Guy bar stool. Um so we pull up. I go, Mike, you know, I'm 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 in Philly with my boy Mike. I just hood. Mike, you think they open? He security guy comes down. Bar suit shirt. Oh yeah, we we in this bitch. Yeah, exactly. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up? Are y'all open? I'm trying to get a beer. He, I don't know yet. Uh, what do you say, Mike? Tell him. Help me out. He went back. He's like, let me let me go see what I can do. <laughs> right. Like, can Pat come in for a beer? Everybody comes running. Everybody comes running out. Hell yeah, okay. he can come out here for a beer. The fuck yeah, you let exactly. Him in. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be best friends with that security guy by the by week two. Yeah. And I met a guy him. in there. I'm talking about his birthday. He just turned 26 years old. He's in that joint with a Philadelphia Eagles hat, 76ers NB jersey. <laughs> his muscles are out though. I'm talking about. I'm talking. He cut the fuck up. Oh, he's he like 6'4", so his cut up is very oh, he's on the trend. Yeah, his ass look like, you feel He's on the Winnie. Right, now you yeah. get what I'm saying. Damn, he was, so this is one thing about Philly. They will wear their sports jerseys. Yeah. They will wear their Eagles. They will wear their Phillies. They will wear their Sixers, and they will wear their Flyers all at together. all times, yeah. all together. I got you go my to yeah. a function. You go out to like brunch on a Sunday. Everybody's repping different teams. I'd say it's about thirty-five to forty percent of the wardrobe of any Philadelphian is just team clothes. I have my. I bought my my Frenchie Bulldog a collar, fucking a, a Philadelphia Phillies collar. Yeah, I'm locked. locked in. He's locked in. He get lost. He's a Philly dog. We gotta go to some Phillies games, bro. We gotta go to Phillies games. We gotta go. We're sleeping. Yeah. Also, wait, but you also gotta talk about the other place that you went to. Aspen. McGillens. 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 So Mike makes right. Mind you, I'm in my I'm in a big ass tank. <laughs> Right, I'm riding through Philly tank. So if you see it, anything of a vehicle that looks like a tank, that's me. Like if Elon Musk designed the Batmobile, is right. what your shit looks that's, like. Yeah, that's what my shit looks like. Yeah. So I'm in that bitch high step and I got like 10 wheels rolling down the street. <laughs> McGillan's, right? Yeah. We pull up there. Through the back alleys, right? Yeah, tiny street. Security, security comes. He... Man, I thought y'all was about to rob this bitch. <laughs> I say, nah, man, we just, yeah, I was going to let y'all. <laughs> I feel you. Philly is wild. Philly is wild. That place but let me, speak, let me speak to you a, lot, a little bit more about Philly. So I know I spoke about Ubers and all that, but I didn't speak about DoorDash. What do they got on DoorDash? Oh, here we go, buddy. So this is around the same time that I, this is might have been the same day of the Uber incident. All right, this has been my Philly experience. I, I feel like I could guess what's gonna happen. I ordered DoorDash. Bing, 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 bing. First off, I live on. I live on. Uh, All right, let's dox that. And uh, dox yourself. And 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 my trainer uh, out the blue. He's not even from Philadelphia. Julius, he's not even from Philadelphia. He comes to me one day I, after my Philadelphia practice. Goes, uh, hey bro, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I say. Hey bro, you know they used to sell slaves out there. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you now, brother. Right, right, I, I, Most I, I, expensive house home. No, I didn't know that, dude. Yeah, man. You got to look that shit up, man. Right. You probably sold a lot of things. Right. I mean, let's just. So, so I'm like, okay, cool. So uh, um, I order DoorDash. I order hand soaps. I order, I don't know, little shit, you know. Uh, the brush, some, yeah. some baby oil, you know, tiny shit. Right. 
And then Cali, I order my DoorDash. I fucking, you know, I go back. I go, go fucking go for a swim. I fucking play the video game. I come back to the door. 30 minutes later, my DoorDash is there. Seven minutes. They took my shit in seven minutes. <laughs> they came to your door and dashed. Listen. <laughs> then I, oh, man, my dogs need food. Let me get my dog collar. Let me get this, this. They take that shit. <laughs> Bro, they're fucking rascals out there. Mind you, I have no vehicle in Philly yet, right? So I, I only thing I have is my Sprinter van, right? So oh, yeah. none of my cars, I, you know, they, I'm, obviously my, my Jeep just got here yesterday. But before then, only thing I had to drive around in Philly was my Sprinter. So mind you, I'm in this big ass Sprinter van going to practice every day, right? I don't give a fuck. I'm not about driving to- the Sprinter van. Yeah, yeah, I'm driving the Sprinter van. So I can't. So I really can't park the Sprinter van like I want to, right? Because I want to park it at the gym. Like 15 feet long. Right. I want to park it at the gym. I can't park it at the gym until my car gets here. Batmobile just got here yesterday. Right. So my time in Philly, my last two weeks, I've been in Sprinter. I can't leave it at the gym. Maybe I leave it at the gym the first night and I can Uber, you know, one time if I had to do something quick. But for the most, you know, most time I'm driving in Sprinter, I'm leaving in Sprinter. I can't park in front of my street because they're, they were doing construction. So I have to park in the back. I park in the back last Thursday. I leave. I go I go to Aspen. Me and wife, we go to Aspen. Shout out. Deep man down. Shout out to Aspen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I come back. My chef has all these type of stories. I like people were ready to call uh, HOA and said the sprinter. Say, is it because we're not blocking anything? Is the sprinter a problem? Yeah, it's just a, a, a sore, just sore for the eye. Yeah, that's how they get that's how they getting down on me in Philly. Damn, yeah. you got the high shore car? Yeah, so I had to drop Sprinter off last night at practice facility. <laughs> Not, you know, and I got Batmobile. Philly, Philly, Philly has a bite to it, and I like it. I like Philly. It, it, if you ain't in shape, it'll whip you right in shape, if you know what I mean. What the hell? So are they gonna be cool with the Batmobile sitting out back? No, no, no. I can park the Batmobile in the in a garage. The Sprinter couldn't fit in the garage. Uh, Hence why I had to park it outside. Got it, got it. Damn, Mean Girl's going in to talk to Erica. Yeah. Scoop. Um, damn, brother. The Rose ain't even got here yet, so I don't even know what I'm going to do with that. Yeah, if you need a spot to put it, man. Chill, chill, I, chill, chill, just, I got you. I chill. just slide it over at uh, my dad's house. <laughs> 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 my dad pulled up to Drexel in the Rolls. Chill, 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 chill. Um, subscribe to the pod. Uh, Pat Bev is officially in Philly. Uh Drop some drop recommendations, bro. No. Give us places. Drop where- name of blood who took my food from DoorDash. Drop that name. I mean, I got bit. That was rickety cricket, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. fucking just rolled just up there. Up. That was the fucking Mick Poyle twins. Then I go out one day. I see, you know, you know, tweakers. That, that's that's fair to say. That's who took your shit. Like you're talking about the same people. All right. Okay. So, guy just walking down the street. I'm talking about rapping, like. Full blast, but Philly voice. So I'm, I'm gassing them up. I, yeah, something dark and bang, bang, and bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, give me more. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'm giving gas right. Yeah, man, I got on one shoe and everything. Person like that, I tip. <laughs> ah, you wouldn't though. Okay. Got it. That's not true. In your own I, city. I fund the fucking... I, I'm, oh, I take it as a pleasure I, I, to give I, money I, to the homeless. To the tweakers, as you call them. I call them unhoused brothers of mine who have fallen on hard times. No, no, you're not going <laughs> no, to try to do that. You, you know, it's a difference. It's, 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 it's the ones who are really homeless is the tweakers. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I live those, in California. Yeah, there's they're probably more zombies in Philly, but or maybe they're tweakers. If he's just if he's just rapping lyrics, you know what I mean? It could be that sounds like a high energy individual, yeah. not necessarily. I had a to zombie. get out of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, Philly, Philly's been great, bro. Philly's been great. The Top people, recommendations. The been drop the name too. of the guy that stole. But now you gave your address. They know there's gonna be DoorDash there every day. <laughs> They're gonna be going up and down whatever street you live yeah. on, just being like, well, there's gotta be DoorDash somewhere. Yeah. Man, there's I, just I, some I, I fucking baby Philly. oil and deodorant hanging from a door. It's probably Pat Bev's house. Yeah. <laughs> I fuck with Philly. I fuck with uh you know, going to work every day has been a vibe, man. It really has. Have you, what's your breakfast? The weather's spot? been great. Yeah. Except for this rooftop, it's been great. Philly's been great, man. Hot tub. Oh, chill, 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 chill. You're saying you after practice, you got to you. <laughs> My dogs love it. My chef loves it. It's great. Um, I love that for you. We got to train up here at 5 a.m. 
Omelet on train. Light work. Light. We need to get, we need to listen to some like uh New Jersey club music. We gotta go to like some New Jersey fucking like a, a club or some shit like that and fucking New Jersey is a beautiful city. I love ah, it over there. Beautiful city. Um beautiful city. Beautiful city. Uh Pat Pet Pod with Roan. Subscribe. We'll be back next week with more episodes detailing the great adventures of Pat Bev as he uh corrals the Sixers to a uh, whatever how the, the greatest heights they can achieve. See you guys next week.